Hey there, hi there, ho there. Hello there, my name's Adam. Welcome back to the channel Kaputi Inc. I know you're asking yourself, why are you standing like an idiot? Well, I mean, it's anytime I'm standing, it's like an idiot, because I'm an idiot. But uh, in this certain case, it's because I'm trying to block out the sun. Woo, that thing hot! I should say the storm, because it's a lightning clone. Uh, 01 F150 that I've been doing a little tinkering on. Did a little motor swap action. New wheels, got a whole bunch of other parts ready for it. We're going to check it out. Let's get kicking. There she is, the uh, shop truck, lightning replica, whatever you want to call it, parts runner. Uh, it's an 01 F-150. It was originally a 4.6 automatic. It's two-wheel drive, uh, step-side box. It's the same body style as the Lightning. It just doesn't have the body kit yet. Um, the 4.6 I had gotten was blown up. Um, we're actually going to go over some details on it. I don't know what, what exactly is wrong with it, but she's fucked, Bob. Um, we did a 5.4 swap, and so that'll be uh, some interesting details. Maybe that's some why some of you are here, just to kind of get the idea what it takes to do 5.4 to 4.6 swap. Uh, four six to five four swap. Uh, it's really not much. So um, a couple details on the truck: 20 inch Lightning replica wheels. Um, I did uh, pace setter long tube headers. They fit great. Um, the upside there was when I bought this, somebody bought it off an auction with a blown engine. Um, the as you can tell, the truck's in pretty nice shape. So I'm guessing that's why it went to an auction with a blown engine instead of just being scrapped. Um, Somebody cut the cats out and in the process decided to cut both O2 sensors out. You, Anybody who knows a Ford, they have an upstream and a downstream O2 sensor. So I still had the Y pipe, but they didn't have O2 sensor bungs in them anymore. They just whacked it off. I guess I haven't, I've never seen a cat on one of them. Uh, I don't care to do the research, see what it looks like either. But they uh, maybe the O2 sensor is right in the cat. I know I'm sure they're very close to it or whatever. So um, I initially had ordered shorty headers for this, which due to the pandemic, People not wanting to work, they were out of stock, and so which ended up being a blessing. Ordered long tube headers, which already had an O2 sensor in it, so that made more sense to me. They were in a good spot. They come with like extra wire to extend them. Uh, the O2 sensor, it got brand new Bosch uh, O2 sensors in it, and then I ordered this Y pipe kit that was supposed to work with long tube headers, which absolutely did not. I had to cut it up into like four or five pieces, weld it together, and ended up with an extra piece out of it. Uh, I think what I got there looks really nice. So it's a, a full three inch exhaust. Um, it goes headers and then I bought these um, Evil Auto, I do believe they're called, V-band clamps um, in mild steel. Had my buddy TIG weld them to the long tube headers so it's not a slip fit anymore. Um, and then the same with the Y pipe, which I tried to fit the Y pipe with the uh, slip fit situation and I don't even remember where the Y pipe's from. I think it's just a Jags, I got it from Jags or Summit. Who knows who makes it? I guess I wasn't paying attention. But anyways, that gave me the materials to make that deal. Y pipe with uh, V bands on both sides. Um, fits awesome. I love the way it looks. Uh, hopefully, it'll uh, make a really good seal. The V band clamp is actually got a little step in it. I'll go. I'll show you one here in a second. Magic. Here's the fitting, Let's slide in a little closer here. That's from Evil Energy, it's called. And this, um, I can't slide it because it has like this little step in groove, which is awesome. They, it locks together. Then you just have a stainless V-band clamp that goes over here, awesome. I have that where the header meets the Y-pipe and where the Y-pipe meets a flex fitting to a muffler. So it's three inch out of the, uh, the, the collector on the header is three inch. The Y pipe is a full mandrel bend three inch. Then it goes into a flex piece into a three inch thrush muffler. Turn out the side. I have a, uh, a tip that'll go on there to tuck it up nice under the bed, but um, I haven't gotten to that yet. So I just did a little turn out, a couple of tacks. We'll show you that when we get under there. So um, cold air intake, just a generic one. I bought off like Amazon or eBay. Um, the intake that was on here was all messed up and then I didn't know what was going to fit and what wasn't going to fit. I actually assumed I'd have to modify this one. Uh, this one fit, fits like shit, but that's what you get when you buy a cheap intake. Um, all the parts fit into it. It actually comes with the correct, some correct hose to get things hooked up where you need it. So uh, we'll go over all that when we look at the engine bay. So uh, let's take a gander at that stuff. 
Here's the engine bay. Uh, pretty simple. This is a 5.4. I do believe it's out of an 03. Um, I was told it was an F-150, but it had a heavy-duty oil cooler on it. I don't know if F-150s come with that or not, but uh, the motor mounts were a little odd, too. They seem more super-duty, so I think this actually came out of an F-250, but uh, we'll go over the difference, the things I had to change with that, but just the general idea of the intake is this aftermarket eBay deal. Um, it steps the, in the throttle body here or whatever, whatever you want to call this. Yeah, the throttle body. Uh, actually has to step up to this intake tube, steps back down again to, I do believe it's mass airflow, then it steps back up again to go to the filter. Um, it's decent. I do believe there's a bracket over here that's supposed to bolt onto something, and that bracket is missing. There was a bracket that holds the power steering reservoir on the 4.6, and it didn't seem to want to bolt up to the 5.4 the same, like the holes were... The holes were way off and I just decided not to use it and I thought my theory was like oh I can easily mount this power steering reservoir somewhere else but the intake not mounting to it so there's gonna have to be a solution there but this you know just got it together so I'm happy about that uh, I did all MSD coils on it those bolted in they worked really nice um, other than that she's pretty much stock it does have a new intake just the plastic stock intake I ordered off Rock Auto for like a I think I ordered it for an 03 F-150 with a 5.4 and it was a little different than the other ones but for the most part everything bolted up. The um, bracket for the throttle cable is a little off. Um, it doesn't bolt up the same and I don't know exactly what happened here. I don't know exactly what engine, what truck this engine came out of. I don't know what's missing from the last engine because the whole top end was torn apart. So. Just kind of making do here, but things are going pretty well, I think. Uh, the truck runs really good, and it actually started up first fire, uh, first attempt. I mean, after we primed the fuel pump or whatever, it fired right up. Um, yeah, I was, I was pretty impressed, but I guess when you think about it, it's just a stock engine that's not that different than the stock engine that came out. It should fire up and run well. So um, We'll look at the engines and kind of go over the differences that I found from the 4.6 to the 5.4, but for the most part, uh, even though, so I had done a whole bunch of research and an online forum and there's this uh, guy, I don't remember what his name was, but he's just like the foremost authority in this. He does this all the time and he pointed out a few things, you know, you need to X, do look at this, look at that, look at that. And I actually didn't have any issues with some of those things. There was something about I needed to extend, was it the IAC harness um, on the intake and that I didn't need to do that. There's a... Uh, runner control valve in a 4.6 that isn't in the 5.4 so I just have that bolted to a, a bracket down here there's a stud on the front of the engine I uh, took the flapper off so there was an extra mass there was an extra stuff there and just bolted it plugged it in so it's there so the computer sees it um, yeah other than that it's pretty straightforward so we'll look at the 4.6 that came out and I'll try and remember all the things that were different from engine to engine Here's the 4.6 that came out of the truck. This is the bracket I'm talking about. I do believe it, bounce, it bolts to the side of the engine, like right here. Yeah. And it's supposed to hold the power steering reservoir, I do believe, um, if this is the correct one. But these bolt holes on the 5.4 were different. I don't remember what was different about them, but the bolts didn't bolt in. I couldn't get this thing to bolt on there, so that's why I just said screw it. As far as the front of the engine goes, um, I replaced on the new engine water pump, idler pulley, tensioner, and pulley, it's all one assembly. The harmonic balancer stayed the same, obviously, for the 5.4. Uh, air conditioner came off this engine, bolted right to the 5.4. Power steering pump came off this engine, bolted to the 5.4. The only thing was, I had to use the bolts out of the, because that, that engine, it was just a takeout, and it came with a power steering pump on it, but, I decided to use this one because it was all the hoses that were already in that truck and it was all the, the, the hose was cut on that one so I was going to have to take it apart where this one was ready to go. The only thing was that this was going to have an 8 rib pulley on it which doesn't matter because I'm using a 6 rib belt. Uh, same with the AC unit that has an 8 rib pulley but we're using a 6 rib belt with 6 rib pulleys everywhere else. Uh, everything works fine. The belt doesn't squeal, comes on, it works great. Um, the standard length belt that was supposed to be for like a 01 F-150 with a, a 4.6 or a 5.4, neither one of those I do believe worked correctly. I ended up getting a 100 inch 
105 eighths inch belt that I used on that. Um, just went to the store and I was like, hey, give me two sizes. I, I had the original belt and I actually took a razor blade and I cut off two ribs and it ended up being too tight. So I went and got like the next three sizes bigger and it ended up being, uh, you know, Goldilocks right in the middle kind of thing or whatever. Is that the story of Goldilocks? I like the one they tell on Grumpy Old Men where it's like a 357 Magnum and that was the end of the three bears. But, uh, so that, that's what I did for belt situation there. The power steering pump had bolts that were too long for the, the five, four bolts or the I, the, I left the bolts in the power steering pump when I took it off this engine. I made sure like those stay right where they need to go. And when I went to bolt it back to the 5.4, those bolts ended up being too long. So I ended up having to steal the bolts out of the 5.4 steering, power steering pump that came on this engine. It was a takeout out of a junk truck or whatever. Um, and those were the correct length. They are different lengths apparently. The power steering pump, bolt, power steering pump bolts and a 5.4 and a 4.6 or different lengths. Uh, they weren't mixed up, uh, they, it was just weird. So, uh, engine mounts. These are the factory engine mounts and I got the same, I got the replacement ones of these brand new um, and they bolted right onto the 5.4, 5.4 slid in. Don't have the starter on when you put it in. It fit with the long tube headers on going in and the starter but I ended up fucking up the solenoid on the starter trying to get it to slide in there. So in retrospect, put the starter in afterwards. Even though it seems like it would be hard, my thought was like, oh, with long tube headers, it's gonna be impossible to get a starter in and out. It is not, they did a good job redesigning that. Um, so that this is what was bolted to the 5.4 uh, for its engine mount, which obviously is not going to fit in, in the truck because uh, this uses a closer style. You can see, you can see on this, this would bolt up these holes are the same width, so this bolts up, well this way I should say, and, but this motor, the 4.6 and the 5.4 pick up an engine mount bolt a little farther back where this must be Super Duty or maybe this is just a later F-150, I, I don't know. Um, this uses four of them that are closer together that are on the, on the block, they're just not used, but this one picks up two up front and one a little farther back. This also had to do with the, um, the 5.4 came with a engine cooler, uh, engine oil cooler, which I bypassed. I just put the small um, oil filter adapter on the front that was on the 4.6. Uh, down the road, I might switch back and put that back on, you know, um, hoping to supercharge it eventually. Maybe that's a smart move, having that oil cooler on there. Uh, we'll see. We're just trying to get it running kind of in basic form now. Uh, <clears throat> on the 5.4, there was a boss, like a mounting... Uh, it was cast into the engine block. It did nothing, you know, at least for our application, I should say. It did nothing. It was right here on the driver's side front of the block. Um, and it actually blocked the oil pressure sensor from being able to go into the factory um, deal there where the oil filter goes in. They bolts right to the front of that. On the Super Duty one, or the, the oil cooler one, it comes into the side. But on a plain one or whatever, just the stock one where it's just the water passage and uh, oil oil passage there with the filter bolts too. It goes straight in and that boss on a 5.4 gets in the way and I had to do a little massaging with a grinder bit. Um, my research showed that that wasn't useful for the application. It's not going to do any damage. So we just, we did a little clearancing. She spun right in, worked out really well. Uh, the other difference, another difference that I have found on a 4.6, here's your rear uh, heater. It goes to your heater core tube, heater coolant passage tube, whatever you want to call it. On a 5.4, it has a nipple off it that runs a hose to your throttle body. I assume that's a cold weather deal or a warm up deal. And then off the intake, there's another nipple that, so water goes in, water goes out. So, it goes up here. This guy, this hose runs back here to this intake nipple and this one goes right in the front here uh, as you can see it was rotted off so that actually is what caused me to get a newer intake for it because that piece there was rotted off the new one comes with just a standpipe and a little plug next to it so you could add it if you need to you know I believe that's modular so that if you needed to use that intake in a different situation where it didn't have the nipple so it worked out sweet and then the tube on the back 
If I would have thought about it ahead of time, I probably would have cut it off and welded up the hole or had it soldered up or done something different. But it was in the truck already. And so I just took a piece of good fitting tubing, two clamps, put a bolt in it, real tight fitting bolt, two more clamps. So hopefully we don't have any issues with that. If we do, I'm an idiot, I'll have to fix it later. All right, as far as intake manifolds, besides the fact that uh, the 5.4 is wider than the 4.6 at the top, here's the fact that the 4.6, which is actually cast aluminum, or is aluminum, which would be sweet, with a plastic runner on the bottom here. And you can see right here is where that flapper deal that's supposed to, uh, I assume it lengthens or shortens the runners to give you to change torque, whatever. Here's the factory 5.4 manifold. It does not have that. And then this intake crossover is supposed to be on the front, like so. Here is the uh, original tube, and you can kind of see that little nipple where that would go. That was rusted off, broke off. So I tried to steal the one out of the 4.6 and press it into here, and it went okay, but then I think I see a crack, and I just said, screw it. So we ordered a new intake for 150 pounds. Here is the oil cooler that was on the side of the block. Here's where your oil pressure sensor would go in and out. Here's uh, where the oil filter would go. It'd actually mount like this on the side of the block. But uh, all these extra hoses and stuff. I don't know if I needed all that, so I said, screw it. We'll just go to the simple and delete all that stuff. The throttle body bolted. I took the throttle body off the 4.6. I put it on the new 5.4 intake. Uh, it fit, no problem, and all the hoses lined up, so that ended up being sweet. I ended up having to replace the uh, dipstick tube. This is not the rotted off one, obviously, um, but I ended up there, pretty common thing on Ford is the dipstick, tu dipstick tube rots off. I replaced that. Um, new trans mount it got, uh, new intake gaskets. My new intake actually, this one uses a full gasket like this here. This guy here, we're just on there. But my new one actually had O-rings on each individual port. Came from like Dorman or whatever, so bolted right on. Truck runs good. Besides the wheels, the truck itself is pretty much stock aesthetically. Uh, stock grill, stock bumper. Um, stock mirrors. It was a sport model, so uh, whatever that came with. I do have a new grill for it, a new billet grill. Uh, I do have a lightning front bumper for it. It's right there. Uh, so we'll get that. It just slides over the factory bumper, so it'll have a lightning front bumper. Uh, things that I did change, it had the old, uh, I think this was a grandpa truck. It had the bug deflector on it, so you can see the remnants of that little rub spots where the bumper, the rubber bumpers on the bug deflector were. Uh, it did have a couple mud flaps, 86 those real fast. So um, the other things on the back of the truck, we'll go look at that in a second. Back of the truck. Went with the uh, dark tinted, clear lens, but uh, I guess it's kind of like a Euro taillight, which is what the Lightning came with stock was actually a factory Euro taillight, but I didn't, I didn't like that. So I went with this blacked out unit dark as possible. Up here on the back of the cab, the third brake light, that's all smoked out. LED. I was going to do LED taillights, but they're, they're stupid expensive. Uh, it has a low rider tonneau cover or hard shell cover, whatever you want to call it. Uh, works nice. Pretty sweet rig there. Got the inner fender sitting in here at the moment. But box itself is pretty nice shape. Pretty good about that. We did the uh, old badge delete here, and to fill the holes in, I put some white vinyl sticker over it. It's custom touch. Check me out for more of that information. Uh, did the same thing on the front fenders. Got rid of the F-150 badges. Uh, I found some 5.4 liters uh, badges off like a newer truck that are already back blacked out. And I just put those over the biggest holes, and then I got a little white vinyl to go over the, the rest of them. Uh, eventually this truck will get painted and stuff, and when we do that, we'll just fill those holes proper. But right now we'll do the, uh, the old ghetto look, I'm trying to be fancy. The rear bumper on this thing is decent, but I think it might be a little tweaked. It's just, it's got some surface rust on it, which we can sand off and repaint, but 
It's a little tweaked on this side. That might have been from me unloading it, loading it. It might not have been. Who am I to judge if I'm an idiot or not? That's for you in the comment section. Let me know I'm an idiot. Let me know I'm handsome. Either way. Here we are at the side of the truck. You can see the badge here. This says 5.4 L. Um, then little toilet paper splotches there. Like, like back in the day, you used to cut yourself shaving. Interior. Well, it is a little dirty. It's pretty grandpa fresh. I'm pretty jazzed about it. The driver's seat. <laughs> Almost fell. Has a little rip right here um, where every seat does. But this truck has 240,000 miles on it. So for how nice this interior is, I'm pretty excited about it. So right now we just have it turned out to shoot in the direction that the uh, exhaust will go out. We got the old thrush, three inch in, three inch out. Little flex tubing. Got the Anvil Automotive V-band clamp there. Three inch Y pipe. Goes around. Here she comes off the header. Into the V-band again on both sides. You can really see it on the other side. the progress on my lightning pickup so far pretty jazzed about it uh, things that'll change will be uh, the altitude if you will uh, I've got a lowering kit from Belltech it's a 2-4 kit um, hopefully that's enough to drop it as much as I'd like I have a feeling the large gap in the wheel well there that's way more than four inches is telling me no but hey I've been wrong before it'll happen again uh, exhaust tip out the side lightning body kit um, I have the lowering kit already. I have the lightning front bumper. We need to straighten out this little guy right here. I don't know if you can tell there, but that bumper's tweaked a little bit. Hopefully it'll tweak back. If not, we'll have to just get a new bumper for it. Uh, tint the windows. I'll have my boy Tyler do that. Um, I kind of want to get the seat repaired. Uh, I was looking at, you can get a lightning interior kit. I don't know if they fit over the stock seat or not. It sounds like no. Um, We'll see, maybe just try and get that, that seat patched or whatever. Shouldn't be that hard to do. Somebody can do that. Otherwise, we'll just get some sort of kit. I'm sure there's one on Amazon or eBay. If you have any suggestions for that, uh, please leave in the comments below. Other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. There should be more content coming with it uh, in the future here. Sorry videos are taking so long to come. I'm busy. It's Sunday afternoon right now. Finally got a little time off. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like. Feel free to uh, comment, tell me I'm handsome, tell me I'm an idiot, tell me I'm ugly as fuck, you know, if you're that kind of judgy, but you know I'm not, you know I'm not that, like, you know I'm not. Anyways, and uh, if you want to see me doing more of my most excellent work, please subscribe, see you on the next one.